flowing river. Come with us now to a time before man, when the river flowed through a newborn world, and giants walked the earth. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Welcome to Theme Park History, the channel for everything to do with theme parks, old and new, big and small. In today's episode, we will be taking a look at Universal Studios Hollywood's Jurassic Park, The Ride, a water-based attraction that opened at the park on June 21st, 1996. This attraction was suggested by Jason Bellows, Chucky Raider, Jacob Caruso, Anthony Campos, Face Licker 63, Stephen Lobo, Wade Willie TV, Emily Lombardo, X8675309858X, x Puglio3, Masile Vasquez, Victor Diaz, Indoraptor, Dr. Jurassic Park, Constantino Spados, Jesse Edwards, and I'm sure many more of you by the time this video comes out. So thank you to everyone for the comments. As always, if there's any attraction you would like us to cover on the channel, leave a comment down below. You never know, your suggestion might be next month's video. Based on Steven Spielberg's film Jurassic Park, and Michael Crichton's novel of the same name which the film is based on, Jurassic Park The Ride is the most ambitious attraction Universal Studios has ever created. Being in production before the movie even was being filmed, the attraction was the most fateful translation of a movie to a theme park ride ever. At a staggering $110 million, Jurassic Park The Ride is still the most expensive attraction ever built, being almost twice as expensive to produce than the actual Jurassic Park movie. Even though it was 65 million years in the making, theme park enthusiasts will state that the attraction is worth the price tag as its movie quality sets, lifelike massive animatronics, and the grand finale make it one of the greatest theme park attractions ever created. On November 20th, 1990, Michael Crichton released Jurassic Park, a science fiction novel that centered around a disastrous attempt to create a theme park of cloned dinosaurs. Even before the novel was published, Universal Studios and Amblin Entertainment bought the rights to turn it into a movie. The novel quickly became a bestseller and Michael Crichton's signature novel. The novel became even more famous following the release of the 1993 film adaptation, which has grossed more than $1 billion and has spawned several sequels. While most of Universal Studios' theme park attractions are inspired by blockbuster movies, Jurassic Park would be an exception. The design and development of an attraction based off the novel began in 1990, six years before the attraction would open and more than three years before the film arrived in cinemas. When the novel was published, Steven Spielberg pushed Universal to create the attraction. Ron Benson, the chairman and CEO of MCA Recreation at the time, recalled, quote, when the book came out, Steven immediately contacted us and said that this book was going to make a great ride. Design and development work began in late 1990, with Gary Goddard's Landmark Entertainment being brought in to work on the attraction the following year. The novel featured a lengthy sequence in which its heroes are harassed by dinosaurs as they float down what was intended to be a gentle river ride. Originally, Universal had intended to build an attraction around a jeep that would be featured heavily in the movie. Goddard felt that this would not work, knowing that their T-Rex was not going to be able to chase the jeep or tear through trees and jungles. Instead, Goddard pushed for the attraction based off of the boat ride sequence from the book. Goddard pitched the concept to Spielberg, suggesting that the boat ride would allow them to create their own story that would be in tone and character of Spielberg's movie, but would also add its own surprises. Goddard said, quote, I don't think we should try and recreate the movie because it will never be as good as what we have on film. Spielberg agreed, and the boat ride was greenlit. This would ensure that the attraction had a large capacity, as well as filling a glaring hole in Universal Studios' lineup. The attraction would also be the first water ride at the park. One of the first steps in the creative process was for facilities design manager Craig Doyle to draw up dozens of conceptual designs, upon which architects could base visual models. The ride's design called for a Costa Rica-style jungle, as well as an enormous fake mountain. Before making Jurassic Park, Spielberg had watched tons of movies featuring dinosaur models and wasn't happy with any of them. He approached Bob Gurr, the creator of the King Kong Encounter and Confrontation Signature Monster, to discuss what could be done with the animatronics. 
While Spielberg wanted to make all the dinosaurs in the attraction life-size, Spielberg realized that this was just wishful thinking due to budget constraints at the time. Instead, the groundbreaking computer-generated effects technology that was pioneered in Terminator 2 Judgment Day was put to practice to create most of the dinosaurs. Gurr, however, did collaborate with Stan Winston to produce a huge Tyrannosaurus Rex for the attraction. The idea of using digital effects would eventually be scrapped due to the success of the movie. Once moviegoers were astounded by how terrific and fantastic the lifelike dinosaurs were, Universal realized that trying to rely on digital tricks would just cheapen the overall experience, and instead it would have to use complete life-size animatronics. The robots would have to look believable from every angle, and operate reliably day in and day out. Not only that, but all of them would also would be near or in water. Universal hired Sarkos Industries for creating the animatronics. While the animatronics were being fabricated, artists created full-size versions of each dinosaur, showing realistic skin folds and wrinkles. Each section was then covered with layers of oil-based clay and silicon, which served to make the mold for which the final skin were made. These skins were then fitted onto the robots and painted. The sound effects for the ride were generated by taking the original dinosaur roars from the movie and pitching them up and down to match the animatronic dinosaur's actions. This was achieved by using a computer simulation of the ride long before it was completed. The attraction's finale would be a 51 degree, 85 foot drop starting in the pitch black. Riders would reach a top speed of almost 50 miles an hour with the boat generating a 40-foot wave at the bottom. The drop was put together more than a year in advance of the ride's opening day at manufacturer of Vekoma's factory. The ride's boats would also be unique with a fleet of 16 25-seater vessels, being the largest water ride boats ever built. At a total cost of $110 million, Jurassic Park the Ride is the most expensive theme park ride of all time. The attraction would officially open on June 21st, 1996. The ride's opening was commemorated with a lavish ceremony that had Spielberg and film cast member Jeff Goldblum lighting a ceremonial torch. While riding the attraction, Spielberg requested to be left off at the finale before the 85-foot drop. Acrophobia. Fear of falling from great heights. Hydrophobia. Fear of water. Carnophobia. Fear of being eaten alive. Face your fears. Jurassic Park. The Ride. Only at Universal Studios Hollywood. Located in the lower lot of the park, the attraction is designed to have the feel of Isla Nublar, the island on which Jurassic Park is located. Guests enter the queue by walking underneath the Jurassic Park sign. A tour guide appears on television monitors, reviewing boarding and ride safety. John Hammond, the creator of Jurassic Park and portrayed by Richard Attenborough like in the film, also appears in the video, proudly welcoming guests and talking about the dinosaurs from the attraction. Guests reach the end of the queue and board their tour boats. The ride begins as the boat rises against an elevation, followed by a small plunge. The boat then passes through the iconic Jurassic Park gate. The ride starts at Ultrasaur Lagoon, where two Ultrasauruses are seen eating plants in the water. The boat then moves behind a waterfall and emerges in Stegosaurus Springs, where riders then see an adult Stegosaurus and its young. Two consognatists are seen fighting over an empty popcorn box before the boat enters Hydrosaur Cove, where a Parasolophus pops in front of the raft, spraying water at the riders. The Jurassic Park animal control calls, revealing that the Parasolophus threw the raft off course, causing it to enter the raptor containment area, which is shown to be heavily damaged. Riders next encounter what appears to be an abandoned tour raft, where Dilophosaurus is seen eating the remains of a poncho. A Mickey Mouse hat can be seen floating in the water next to the ruined raft. A heavily damaged tour vehicle can be seen being pushed over the wall to the right of the raft, which barely misses being hit by the vehicle, and the grunts and growls of a Tyrannosaurus are heard. The Laphosaurus jump out and spit their toxic venom at guests. The raft then enters the environmental systems building and slowly begins to ascend a long lift hill. A voice on the loudspeaker in the building alerts guests that an emergency evacuation is going to be attempted. As the raft makes its way up the hill, numerous alarms are heard as escaped velociraptors lunge out at the guests. Once the raft reaches the top of the lift hill, it drops down a small waterfall, where it narrowly misses being devoured by a Tyrannosaurus. 
A claw falls from the ceiling followed by its head and a set of collapsing pipes above the riders' heads. A technician begins counting down when the building's life support systems will terminate due to toxic gases released during the previous Tyrannosaurus encounter. The raft climbs a small lift hill that brings it closer to the emergency evacuation drop. A second technician screams. The Tyrannosaurus then emerges from a waterfall coming from broken pipes in front of the guests and lunges down to grab the raft, which escapes by plunging down an 85-foot high evacuation drop and into a local lagoon outside the Environmental Systems building. A Dilophosaurus tries to squirt venom at the passengers one last time. A can of Barbasol can be seen in the planter just before the ride ends, referencing the can that Dennis Nedry uses in the first film to steal the dinosaur embryos. The raft finally makes its way to the unloading dock, where guests disembark the ride through the Jurassic Outfitters gift shop. The attraction was an instant hit with guests, as wait times were over two hours in its first weeks of operation. Let me show you. You see the line here? Okay. When it goes out there, it goes all the way up the hill. Then it goes into two little sections of rows. <laughs> Just like Universal had done with its previous attractions, they had once again created an experience that left guests talking and had stunned the industry, combining movie quality sets, massive animatronics, and source material from one of the most successful movies ever created. Jurassic Park the Ride would become the hallmark attraction of Universal Studios Hollywood. On May 10th, 2018, Universal announced that Jurassic Park The Ride will close down on September 3rd for a nine-month-long renovation to transform the ride into a new attraction based off the spin-off Jurassic World film franchise. As of this video, not much is known about the renovations coming to the attraction, but the new version of the ride is slated to debut in 2019 and will include all new audio, animatronics, and special effects while keeping the original ride system intact. It is unknown right now whether the other Jurassic Park attractions at Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Universal Studios Japan, and Universal Studios Singapore will undergo the same transformations. So why will the attraction close? One reason, Jurassic World. When the film was released in 2015, it became the first film to gross $500 million worldwide. The movie would go on to generate a total of $1.6 billion in box office revenue, making it the fifth highest grossing film of all time, as well as the highest grossing film in the Jurassic franchise. The success of the movie led to a recently released sequel, Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom, and another untitled sequel set to be released sometime in 2021. Wanting to capitalize on the success of the newer films and their aggressive stance to replace older attractions with newer, more popular movie franchises in an attempt to draw guests to their parks. It made sense from a business standpoint for Universal to update the classic attraction. Fan reaction to the news has been mostly negative. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. As many feel that the transformation to the new franchise is unnecessary, as both the original film and the attraction are still relevant today. Many fans believe that instead of replacing the original attraction, the Jurassic World franchise deserves its own attraction, one that focuses on the newer movies and has an entirely different ride system, not just a re-theming of the existing attraction. For over 22 years, Jurassic Park The Ride has been the ultimate experience for guests to ride the movies. As the most faithful translation of a movie to a theme park ride ever, the attraction sent millions of guests back to the Jurassic era, taking them face to face with predators that once roamed the Earth. The attraction would go on to redefine theme park entertainment and become the staple of not only Universal Studios Hollywood, but other Universal theme parks as well. While the original attraction will be going extinct, if there's one thing that the history of evolution has taught us, is that life finds a way. Oh, there it is. So that is the theme park history of Jurassic Park, The Ride. As always, thank you for watching the video and supporting the channel. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if there's any attraction you would like us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. Once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, hold on to your butts. Something big is coming to McDonald's. Hold it down. Something of such enormous proportions. Stand back. It could only be called the Jurassic Park Extra Value Meal. Okay.
Let's see! An enormously juicy triple cheeseburger with fries and a medium drink in one of six free Jurassic Park collector cups. The Jurassic Park Extra Value Meal. A dino-sized value for a dino-sized appetite. Hey, where's mine? What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. 